Hello and welcome to another Blu-ray update video. Yep, it's that time again and <laughs> you know for all my all my promising to myself that I would cut back on Blu-ray purchases um, it seems I've kind of tipped the scales in the wrong direction here. I've kind of cut back on buying like single titles, single titles here and there and here and there and just bought like a big box set every month of 2022. Um, now I've been frugal and I've been specific and I've been smart in that I've pretty much only bought stuff with money that I've sold old Blu-rays um, for and with. But um, yeah, I, I'm, I was just looking at the things I haven't shown yet in a video and I thought, oh yeah, actually it's all like limited edition box set stuff. Um, it's all kind of stuff that I know will go out of print at some point. So let's just throw it all together in a big limited edition Blu-ray box set blowout bonanza. So we're going to get into this. Um, there is Plain Archive, there is Indicator, there is Imprint, there is 88 Films, there is Arrow Video. The only main thing missing really is, um, I'd say, BFI or Criterion. Um, otherwise, most of the heavy hitters of the boutique labels are accounted for. Now, we're going to start with the one that I was the most excited to get, and I've actually watched everything in it already, if you can believe that. Um, <laughs> and a couple of these I was debating whether or not to hold off on showing until I had watched everything in them, but it's going to take a long time because there's a lot of movies. In fact, let's just, before we even get into this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 14, 15... There's about 20, 25 films altogether here. Anyway, let's get right into it. This one, um, shout out to James Merchant, um, both as a, a thank you and you enabled me hugely on this one. Um, he linked me to this and I thought, oh wow, I don't think I cannot buy this even though it's pretty pricey, but it was one of those things where I just thought it's worth the extra money for me. And having received it, I can say almost it was worth the extra money. This is a gorgeous piece. This is a Plain Archive um, exclusive box set. It's number 67 in the Plain Archive series. And it is Celine Siama, the coming of age trilogy, as it's been dubbed. Um, so this is all in French on the front here. I remember seeing the, the design of it online and thinking, wow, that's a really like poorly designed front cover. They just tried way too hard on this, but with the colors, I actually kind of really like it, um, but I'll show you more of why. And I'm going to do a separate, maybe videos, plural, on this set because I've, I've now watched all the films. Um, but it's a really, like, the, the texture of this box is beautiful. It's, it's a real collector's piece. You know, every inch of this has something to, to look at. Uh, and this is limited edition number 843 of only 900 copies. So get it while you can, I guess. And I got it while it was on a little bit of a, a reduction on the pre-order. I pre-ordered this like months before it came out and paid for it months before it came out, which I don't like to do, but I didn't want to miss out on this one. Even the spines, the way the spines match up is gorgeous. Uh, my only real issue, well, there's two. Uh, one, there was a couple of frame drops on one of the movies, which was a bit unfortunate. And I wouldn't say that Play and Archive are like up to the standards of say like, Arrow video or Criterion when it comes to like that the transfer and like you know all the kind of the but then again Arrow video have been caught out a lot with quality control issues lately it is what it is but um, these are three films by the French filmmaker Celine Suyama and there's a theme here of these kind of the images of these women on the front um, and it's all from a similar kind of half profile or it kind of like moves over to full profile by the third film and then you kind of see the ears on the back. So when you open up the full thing, you kind of get the uh, the full wide shot there, which is really, really nice. And these, you know, Digipack packaging usually feels quite flimsy, but these are really solid because on the inside you have um, these little slots where there's loads of um, postcards, which are like gorgeously done. They've got like debossing on them. It's just like really, it's the one thing Plain Archive really does well is just making the packaging feel like elite, like ridiculously high quality. And the main problem I had was that the booklet, unfortunately, um, had a, a pressing issue, I guess, where it kind of came up and up the spine there when I opened it. 
so you can see all the glue on the on, on there which is kind of a shame it's not in rough shape or anything i can still read it it's not like falling apart completely but i might contact them see if they can do something about that anyway the three films are included uh celine siama's first three movies so we have i'll just show you very quickly we have water lilies i won't attempt the french titles uh, from 2007 tomboy from 2011 and then finally her 2014 film girlhood um, which i don't like as a title because it came out the same year as boyhood and it kind of makes you feel like they just jumped on the the success of boyhood to try and get some attention which maybe worked maybe didn't um, and it's a very different film and the um, french title is more closely translated to band of girls or group of girls or gang of girls i think um, which is a little bit different than girlhood, so to speak. Very carefully put these back in, but I had seen Water Lilies before. Um, had not seen Tomboy or um, Girlhood. Uh, I've now seen all three of them, and they're all five-star films for me. I absolutely love Celine Siyama. I've now seen all of her films, and all of her films I'd give five stars um, in, in very different ways. I think that, for me... Girlhood is the is the most kind of like that's the one I'd really recommend as a five star movie because it's just so well done on so many different levels. Tomboy is a bit more controversial, uh, I, I admit, but there are just things in that that are the way that she captures childhood and uh, love between a family, among many other things. It's such a short film as well, um, is just incredible to me, and that's why it makes it a five star film. And Water Lilies is like. The way that she approaches kind of the the awakenings of kind of love and lust in a teenager, I think is just so unique and honest and kind of raw and just really um, captivating. So it really is a coming of age trilogy in that sense where you get three very different perspectives on people who are growing into that next stage of their young lives and uh, well, three incredible films. I'm so glad that I got the box set. And I think this is the the world premiere for her first film, Water Lilies, on Blu-ray, whereas Tomboy and Girlhood had previous releases. None of the extras, unfortunately, have English subtitles, which is a shame, but the main features do. Moving swiftly on from that box set, um, we go to a questionable one for me. I This is a really tricky one. Um, Vanessa, if you're watching, I have no idea if you will watch this or not, but... Um, you're the one who really made me buy this one without really making me. It was Vanessa as a good friend of mine through uh, YouTube and kind of the film community online. And she was kind of raving about this box set. I was very intrigued by the look of it when it first was announced. Um, I'll just show it to you straight away just before, as we get into this conversation here. It is Mae West in Hollywood, the indicator box set from, what was the years? From 1932 to 1943. And this is limited edition 1,567 of 6,000. Um, so this is just a gorgeous box set. Absolutely stunning. Uh, and you get kind of digipacks of, well, six digipacks that house the, I think, eight films. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and ten films, in fact. Yes. So this is just loaded with stuff. Um, and, like, the extras on the back. It's just chock full of stuff. This is where, for me, it's less about the collector in me that wants to own films I love and will watch again and again, and it's more the film collector in me that enjoys owning pieces of film history. The 30s is very much a blind spot for me in terms of film history, and there's just so many films from the 30s I haven't seen, and Mae West is one of those kind of icons of the 30s, I think. I've only seen one of her films before, and I actually got a comment on my review of it. What is it called? She Done Him Wrong, I think? Yeah, She Done Him Wrong, which also stars a, a young Cary Grant. And I didn't like it that much, you know? So why'd you buy the box set? Well, see, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. But I got a comment on that review that I did, and it was like, you clearly don't know what you're talking about. Um, and if you're a film student, and you've really got it wrong here, and it's like, well, just, it, 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 why are people such dicks about that? You know, why can't they say, oh, actually, you're incorrect about this. Um, and, and this is why, well, I guess that still kind of comes across as dickish, but there's a way of saying it, there must be, without being a total twat. Um, but regardless, um, it's just funny to me that I'm about to talk about this box set, and today, or last night, I got a comment on my review of it from, like, years ago, 
But you know, this is this is film history. This is film preservation. I mean, most of these come from 4K restorations, 4K scans. I think there's a couple of uh, yeah, I just three of the films have high definition remasters. The rest all come from 4K restorations and scans. There's tons of audio commentaries, loads of extras that they've produced for this box set specifically. New and improved subtitles, Super 8 versions of the movies, you know, um, animations um, featuring characters of Mae West and W.C. Fields, you know, like that sort of stuff is so interesting to me. And there's like appreciations that have been filmed, archival audio recordings of Mae West in 1971. It's just like, it's film history in a box. You know, I want to know more about the 1930s in Hollywood. There's a lot that can be le- can be can be learned and gleaned and uh, and hopefully enjoyed. But we'll we'll see. You know, from what I've heard, that they, they are kind of a mixed bag. But and you get a nice booklet as well. I mean, it's just a loaded package. It was on sale, uh, reduced in price on Amazon for for a little bit there, and I thought mm, I'm going to go for it. And you know, it's ten movies, so it really didn't work out that much per film. And it includes all the you know the original poster artworks and the digipacks, so I kind of yeah it it was it was just and I like the idea of like a box set just featuring an actor, you know like like just kind of showing you like a huge chunk of their resume, all collected in one box set. I just love the I love the idea of the box set <laughs> more than I love the idea of like watching these films, but I do want to watch them, and. Yeah, it just it just looks too good. It was too good to to pass up. Let's just say that. Um, so that's the May West box set. The next one is um, a fairly new release from the imprint label in Australia, and this is just a stunning box set. I have to say, in hand, this thing is just gorgeous, and it's a film that I I really really like a lot. Have reviewed it in the past and and features one of my favorite line deliveries of all time um <laughs> which is when um when well i won't say what it what it is um i'll just show you the film first the film is it's just gorgeous box set the wicker man so this is just a phenomenal super deluxe box set for this classic british film this british folk horror you could call it with uh, christopher lee and edward woodward um, yeah, so and I just love. I mean, you got like the kind of classic image there of the Wicker Man, and you got all of the the writings here on the kind of the banners, and it feels so you know pagan and kind of suitable to. You can get the symbols there on the top, um, above the uh, the Wicker Man on the back. It's a completely different. I love that sun image, you know. So you know when a lot of people were raving about uh, Midsummer a few years ago. A lot of people are kind of pointing back to the Wicker Man. But this is a, a really, really nice box set. Um, and you take the top off here like this. And it's kind of similar to the the Dawn of the Dead Second Sight box set. And in the top there you get three discs. And I'll show you what you get in all three of them. Um, and it kind of, from what I've seen, is pretty much the definitive release of the film. So we have at first here the final cut. So that is kind of the, the preferred version um, from the director, Robin Hardy. Um, in the next case, we have the theatrical cut in high definition and the director's cuts um, in high definition, including standard definition inserts of the director's cut scenes, I believe. Um, yes, standard definition material for additional footage included. Um, and then finally, you have the special features disc along with a CD of the soundtrack. Um, so you just get basically, I'm assuming pretty much, I haven't researched it because I'm not like the biggest fan in the world of The Wicker Man, but um, you get tons of stuff in terms of the archival features that have already existed on previous releases, new things that have been produced in 2022 by Imprint. So you get an audio commentary by BFI film historians Vic Pratt and Will Fowler for the final cut. Um, Burnt Offering, The Cult of the Wicker Man, 2001 documentary, a bunch of featurettes, interview, interview with the director, an interview with the director and Christopher Lee, and a restoration comparison uh, featurette, and then trailers for the final cut, the theatrical film, the US theatrical cut of the film. They really loaded it up with, with extras. The, the director's cut disc only comes with one extra, which is an audio commentary by Kim Newman and author Sean Hogan on the theatrical cut itself. And then the special features disc 
uh, comes with um, the director's cut um, in standard definition. So basically what you got on the, the second disc there, as I said, was the theatrical cut in HD with the director's cut scenes in standard def. I guess the director's cut only exists in standard definition, unfortunately. But on the third disc, you get the entire director's cut in standard definition as an extra along with um, audio commentary by Christopher Lee, Edward Woodward, and the director, Robin Hardy. So that's pretty cool that you get that commentary as well as a commentary on each version of the film. Um, well, maybe not because there's four versions really, but three, one on each disc basically. Then there's a 2013 audio commentary, a making of the director's cut audio commentary, um, all sorts of archival stuff. And then there are five, I think five, one, two, three, four, five new pieces created for this release. Um, Robert Reed on The Wicker Man, an interview with author David Huckvale on the symbolism of the film, uh, a couple of video essays. So, and again, the TV spots, radio spots, the soundtrack, it's, it's just throwing everything you could ever want as a fan of this film. And it is a film I'm very keen to go back to, but my, my favorite line delivery um, of this film and one of my favorite <laughs> line deliveries ever is when Edward Woodward is sitting down with Christopher Lee, who's kind of dropping some knowledge, some choice knowledge on <laughs> Edward Woodward's character. And uh, he's, he's aghast at what he's hearing. And he just, he jumps to his feet so indignantly. And he just looks at Christopher Lee and he goes, what? <laughs> just this, what? <laughs> just absolutely killed me when I saw it for the first time. But uh, man, what a what a gorgeous release from Imprint. Um, just just gorgeous. And I haven't shown um, a release that I got a couple of months ago, which is um, from Imprint again, and it is The Gift. And this one is, I, I have watched this one actually. Um, this is Sam Raimi, I think it was before, just, just before he did Spider-Man, Sam Raimi, who everyone's talking about at the moment because of um, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which is a very good film. Um, this... It's kind of like a paranormal thriller, I would say. Murder mystery thriller. It is kind of a whodunit. And Kate Blanchett plays this woman who um, kind of has visions of people. And it comes into play with the killing in the area. And I, I really enjoyed this one. It was an amazing cast. I mean, you got like Hilary Swank, Keanu Reeves playing a very cons convincing, I was going to say consistent, a consistently convincing um, racist asshole, um, which is kind of against type for Keanu Reeves. Um, Kate Blanchett, um, Giovanni Ribisi, if that's how you say his name, who's just such a great actor. You know, he he's he has a he has a way about him, and in this film as well, it's such a a unique cadence to kind of you know which, which he brings to most things that he does. To be fair, but um, his character is very um, gripping to watch in this film in particular, especially in some very. Uh, harrowing moments um for sure Kate Blanchett is very good in the film and um I, and also um Katie Holmes who uh I was kind of like, oh remember her like she just seems to fall off the face of the planet after a certain point Tom Cruise so uh, Greg Kinnear you know it's just a, a very very good cast and I, I really really enjoy it. I should maybe do like a fuller review of this at some point this has got like uh, some good kind of like archival stuff. There's actually an interview with the composer that was um, um, produced for this release as well. So they do really good stuff um, in print. And uh, it, it, it is tricky because when you import them from Australia, it ain't the cheapest. You know, the, it, it, is, it is a pricier um, a boutique label for a foreign collector, foreign to Australia, I suppose. Um, but the, the Wicker Man was just such a gorgeous set. And... Uh, I'm really looking forward to their release of The Warriors coming up soon. And the only other one I have is, um, uh, of course, The Straight Story, which I really want to make a video about because I watched that recently and holy shit, what a film. So I love their release of uh, The Straight Story. Next up, and I am filming this after the video, but I'll slot it in somewhere to be somewhat transparent. But this is another thing I got that is a limited, I'm assuming it's limited, it's, at least it's a special box set -y kind of release. I just saw it on the shelf and thought, oh yeah, I got that. Um, this is Demon Slayer uh, Infinity Train or M Mugen Train, which is holds the distinction, I believe, of being the highest grossing Japanese film at the Japanese box office of all time. 
It's either that or it's like the highest grossing film in Japan ever, period. But I'm pretty sure it's just the highest grossing Japanese movie. I think it beats out Spirited Away, I want to say. Because um, there was a little bit of like, like, ooh, what's Miyazaki going to think? And uh, he, someone was like interviewing Hayao Miyazaki while he was like picking up trash in the street. And they're like, what do you think about Demon Slayer? And he's like, I, I couldn't care less or something. Let me, let me go pick up my trash. But then there was an interview with Suzuki, the producer of Studio Ghibli and kind of the, you know, the, the secret weapon, so to speak, of Studio Ghibli. He gave an interview and he said that he feels like Miyazaki sees this film as competition, something for him to beat when he comes out with his his next final film in, in a couple of years' time. But yeah, this just stormed the Japanese box office. I think it was even the highest grossing film of like the global box office for 2020 because it was 2020. Um, but yeah, so this is a, a film sequel to the first season of the show Demon Slayer, which is adapted from the manga, and it's a hugely successful manga and TV series. And so we have the first series of the show, which leads directly into um, Mugen Train. Mugen? Mugen? Mugen Train, I don't know. Infinity Train. And this is a really nice fancy fancy pants edition, which uh, has a nice kind of like fold out. My only kind of like critique of this you do get a nice booklet, which is very, very nice. Um, which goes into some of the details of the, the making of the film. Um, not a whole lot, but there's some decent kind of like behind the scenes stuff of the, the animation and everything, which is really nice. Um, the inside of the, of the digipack leaves a little bit to be desired for me because you have uh, just black. <laughs> it's, just, it's just blank. So you get the, the movie and the soundtrack. But the back of the digipack is absolutely stunning and very indicative of the art style of the show and movie itself. I might do a separate standalone video talking about this movie, um, but I was very intrigued to see it, both from a perspective of this is the film that kind of broke all the records in Japan, um, but also because I love films set on trains. It's like one of my favorite things. Like. <laughs> If it's a subgenre, train movies, then it's my favorite subgenre. I just I love stories set on trains, whether it's animated or, or live action. So I was very intrigued to see this film, especially knowing that it, be it had become such a, a big success around the world. And I can't fit this thing back inside the case for the life of me. It's not going in there, kind of is. There we go. Okay. So I waited until it came out on Blu-ray. I did watch the first season to kind of get myself acquainted with the world. Uh, and obviously if I didn't like the show, then I wasn't gonna really be that invested in watching the movie. Um, and it took me, the show, I'll talk about it in a separate video so you can kind of get my full thoughts there. But I very much enjoyed the show for the most part. And the movie for me was a great distillation of what makes the show great with uh, maybe a few a few minor hiccups along the way. Otherwise, I really love this film. And uh, and yeah, so that was that. On with the next one, whatever that one was when I filmed it 20 minutes ago. And then we have an 88 Films box set here, which I just forgot to show you. I got it when it came out and I just, it just slipped my mind when it came to showing it off in one of these um, videos. It is, of course, I wasn't going to miss out on this one. It's the Jackie Chan release of Armor of God. So... I have all of them. I have all of the 88 films, Jackie Chan, Blu-rays. And this was the, I think this was the most recent one. I hope, because I haven't bought another one recently. I know there's something else coming soon. But uh, it seems like they've kind of depleted their, their kind of Jackie Chan source. So um, I can't think of anything else they might get their hands on. It'd be amazing to get some films like Who Am I? Or Rumble in the Bronx. Or like the, the full proper... Drunken Master 2, like anyone, please. Um, but Armor of God is definitely my... Well, it's, there's two films, but I prefer the sequel, Armor of God 2, Operation Condor. It's a lot more fun and kind of bombastic and massive. This one it can be a bit of a slog at times, but there's still some incredible stuff. And this was the film where he... If you haven't read Jackie Chan's book, the story about how he kind of um, injured his skull doing a stunt for this movie is unbelievable you know like that how close he was to death and how like serendipitous it was that he managed to get the correct surgery done to save his life it's it's pretty crazy 
but overall I, I do really like the film and I love the um, the ending credits theme for this which is for one of the English dubs I guess and it has Jackie singing this song I don't know what the title of the song is but it's like high up on high and it's like I, I really love that song so when I watched this with Connie a few years ago I think it was for one of my Asian cinema seasons once the credits started on my old blu-ray I, I muted the TV and got up the high up on high song on YouTube and just play that over the credits I love it so much and this Blu-ray has it intact in fact I think there's a you can kind of Frankenstein your own version as far as I remember when it comes to this but you get like a, a big thick booklet you get a poster and a nice hard um, hard box to kind of hold it all together so let's have a look at the I mean again look at all the extras listed it's absolutely nuts you know 88 films when it comes to the Jackie movies and some other stuff they've been doing they've just gone it's just above and beyond. So two disc version. Um, we have a 2K remaster of the Hong Kong cut of the film, uh, which comes with a number of different Cantonese audio options. Um, the home video mix, the original theatrical mix, um, the classic English dub, um, a hybrid Cantonese English version. All versions have the option to play um, either of the closing credit songs. So again, you can kind of Frankenstein your own audio version of this if you want a classic dub with the original song from the from the Hong Kong version or you want to do the Hong Kong version with the the, the English dub uh, song at the end and it's called yeah it's called High Upon High actually that is the theme song title um, so yeah this is just like uh, newly translated English subtitles um, yeah just it's just gone mental um, three audio commentaries um, like all sorts of different featurettes and uh talk show appearances um man it just keeps going and going it is absolutely mental what they've crammed onto this thing japanese release outtakes um interview with golden harvest editor interview with jackie chan archival interviews with with all sorts of people cantonese trailer mandarin trailer japanese trailer all subtitled english trailer blu-ray trailer and then on disc two you have the international cut uh, which was commissioned by Golden Harvest for audiences outside Asia. And this is 10 minutes shorter than the Hong Kong version. Um, so yeah, um, contains the classic English dub with Flight of the Dragon. So there we go. It's just absolutely loaded to the gills. And you got to love that Kung Fu Bob artwork, which is just stunning. So there we go. That is the Armor of God release. And uh, that is pretty much it for this one. Oh, wait. I did mention Arrow Video, didn't I? Hmm. Ah, I saved the best, perhaps, until last. I've been umming and ahhing about this one for a very long time. Months and months and months. And I just couldn't justify the price of it. And I thought, you know, it isn't something I absolutely love and, and feel like I need. So I'm going to pass on this one. Then it went down in price on Amazon, and it was a very good price for what you get in this box set. And I thought, mm, I could afford that. I could get that. And I thought, nah, it's still, I don't know. And I ummed and ahed, and I, I, every night it was there on Amazon on the or on the Blu-ray.com forums, like, you know, top deals of the week. There it is for like £89 or whatever it was. I was like, mm. And then someone on the forum said that, well, tonight's the last night that it's going to be at that price. And I thought, ah, and that kind of impulsive collector side of me was like, well, I got to get it now then. And so I pulled the trigger. I thought, ah, and then it came in and I just saw it in hand. And I thought, what a gorgeous release. It is Sure Scope Volume 1. I mean, this thing just shimmers. It is an app is one of the most gorgeous box sets I've ever seen. Like, I just love the, the kind of effect that they put on that, which is kind of, I guess, reminiscent of kind of the uh, the opening studio logo of um, of the Shaw Brothers, which is what's what this is featuring, which is a bunch of films from that legendary Hong Kong studio. But, uh, yeah, so this is just a whole, like, cornuco cornucopia of, um, of movies, of different genres and, and styles and, and feels and tones from what I've read and understand. Um, I've watched one of them so far. I was going to hold off and watch all of them and then go, hey, surprise, I got the short scope set and here's what I think about every single film, but I didn't do that. I watched the first one, King Boxer, but uh, I mean, yeah, this 
I love the, the the style of this. It's it feels worth the money, you know. It's just again, it it just shimmers. It really does shimmer. So you get a massive book on the inside, which kind of goes through a lot of information of all the films, and then you have the book itself, which contains um, the discs, and you get nice kind of um, color artwork pieces of the movies, which uh, I'm assuming have been commissioned for this release. And you know, I'm not going to go through everything. I'm sure that you've, you know, there are unboxings out there. This isn't an unboxing video per se, but um, really, really cool um, artwork pieces, and really, really gorgeous. And you just get a really interesting selection of films. And uh, the other one that I've seen, well, the first one I saw was the the first film in the set, which is King Boxer, which is I think more commonly known as Five Fingers of Death. Um, as it was released in, in the States, I suppose. This is a really nice one, Chinatown Kid. Love that artwork piece there. Um, and you get like a list of all the extras, and that's another thing, this comes with loads of extras. And there's some Tony Rain stuff on here, which is always worth the price of admission. Um, but the one that I had seen before that was the Five Venoms. Um, or Five Deadly Venoms. And I really, really like that one. I love the concept of it. And, you know, some of the fight scenes in these films, for me, like if you compare it to like a Jackie Chan film, they kind of pale a little bit in comparison because I find in some of these Shaw Brothers movies, um, the choreography kind of goes on forever and you just get kind of like, you know, these amazing feats of choreography where they look a little bit too choreographed. It's just like, boom, 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 boom. Whereas Jackie Chan is like, pow, pow, doo -doo, like that. And it's, it's really like explosive, fast, intense, a bit more believable and like doesn't last as long, but leaves a, a longer lasting impression. That's kind of my feel from some of the Shaw Brother films I've seen. So there's Five Venoms, um, Five Element Ninjas I've seen as well, which is, again, I like the concepts of them. They're very kind of almost cartoony, like the Five Venoms, like they've all got their own kind of like specific skill and like the animal styles and everything. But King Boxer, when I watched that, I thought, oh, this actually has a really good story. And it's a bit dense at times, but I loved the, the fight scenes. And that's why I thought, okay, I think these are all going to be a bit different. And that's a good thing. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this if I'll review all of them at some point. And I'm not going to review King Boxer now. But suffice it to say, um, an absolutely phenomenal boxer. And I, <laughs> I do feel a little bit hamstrung now that when they release Volume 2, I'm probably going to have to get that one, which is... <laughs> is a shame on the wallet, but um, we'll see what happens. I suppose you kind of have to if you got the first one, right? But I'm very intrigued to check out the rest of the films for sure. And <laughs> no pun intended, for sure. And uh, yeah, so and again, you got all the extras listed there. It's, it's pretty damn comprehensive. Kind of one of those no stone left unturned type releases. So there you go, that's pretty much it. In fact, that's not pretty much it, that is it. So, Leave me your thoughts down below on any of these box sets. Have you got any particular um, extravagant or pricey or limited releases or box sets recently? I'd like to hear about them. That is pretty much it for now. I said that's pretty much as you said, I, I'm kind of just regurgitating these kind of like generic phrases and uh, it all feels a bit disingenuous. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you as always in the next one. Hey, he's alright by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans and calling into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. But he's not quite as cool as you. Cause...